Okay, here we go. Do a little outdoor summer fly tying. We're gonna do a green butt skunk today. This is on an Alec Jackson size 5 steelhead iron. And away we go. We're going to take some uh, medium mylar tinsel. We're going to be using the silver side, so tie it in by the gold side uh, facing up. A little breezy as per usual here in Oregon City, but that's okay. All right, gold side facing us. Oops. Try and get that secured in there, along the side or under the on the bottom side. And we're gonna go down to about. I like to go to basically the barb where the barb would have been. And then we'll go back up, get the thread kind of out of the way. And we're going to wrap our tinsel butt to about the point of the hook. And you see now the silver side, which is what we want, is facing us. Okay, reverse our thread back to that point, lash this guy down, now you can do like what I do is I try and advance this kind of forward a little bit to keep my bodies even, even though we're going to cover everything up with some dubbing, uh, I still like to do that, it's a bit of security in there too. We can get rid of this. That way we just don't have a big bump right at the back there. It doesn't really matter. But. Okay. I'm going to get some small or medium, if you have it, silver oval tinsel for your ribbing. And we're going to tie that in. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to do the tail first. Excuse me. Let's hold that down. So I'm going to use kind of the fluffy webby stuff from, this is a Chinese, red Chinese saddle hackle that I have laying around. And I'm gonna kind of try and use this longer webbier stuff. Not quite all the marabou stuff down at the bottom, just Kind of like right there. See if this will. Yeah, kind of that stuff in there. About that much off the feather there. I'm going to try and have even tips if you can. Can't really like throw this in the stacker. I mean, you might be able to, but you don't really have to. So then we're going to work our way back down here. And we're going to size our tail to the hook. How long we want it. Okay. And with a couple loose wraps, we'll get that secured in and work our way up. There you go. And we can try and just cover all this up. That's all going to get covered up with dubbing and everything anyway. And then as we come back with our ribbing, we can really cover this up. With our thread up at the front, let's tie in our ribbing now. No, no. I'm wrong again. 
we're going to do our green butt. So let's come back, let's cover all this up. And this is just kind of my way of doing it. I don't know what the traditional exact way is. I never really worry about that. I'm gonna throw on some chartreuse ice dub. Make a little dubbing rope here, dubbing noodle. We don't need this to be humongous. So we can do about that much there. About an inch or so on the... I'm gonna go right in front of where we tied our tail in. And that's good right there. That's enough. Okay, now I'll advance forward. Now we tie in our rib. And you could have done the ribbing first and just ribbed over your the butt, the green butt section, but I tend not to do that. I just want to rib my body dubbing. <laughs> okay, and that's what comes next. I'm going to use this peacock black ice dub. Do kind of a thin body here. I like to take and rip the fibers in half a few times. I want it spiky and all that, but I don't need a super thick body. I want this thing to sink somewhat as a wet fly. And start in little bats of dubbing. You know, work it on up to the front, a little bats at a time to try and keep this as a consistent body diameter. You could use chenille here. You could also throw this dubbing into a dubbing loop. Makes a fairly consistent body doing that as well. This is kind of just the easy way of doing that. Let that kind of build up a little bit. A little bit more. Oops. Okay, and that's pretty good right there. Now I'm going to counter rib one full turn, then come around two, three, four, out on five. Kind of secure that down. Three good wraps, couple in front. There's your ribbon. Now we're on to our hackle. I'm gonna use this black uh, hen saddle. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. Selecting a feather appropriate to the size of the hook, which is just about most of this cape. Take and we're going to get rid of this fluff down here. Leaving just, just a teens of that webby stuff down below. And we're going to tie this in by the tip. So I'm going to expose the tip here. Like so, stroking our material we want back. And we just lay that right on top and secure it down right in the X of the where we separated that material. Pull the tip back, secure that in so that it doesn't really pull out on us in the hackle process, and trim it off. 
Okay, now we can carefully run our scissors along the stem of the feather here. Try and train this back just a little bit. I go super gentle with it because you can compromise the feather. So that's just FYI. Okay, now we can start doing our forward hackle. Do about two or three solid turns of this guy here. Stroking this back as we hackle it forward. I don't want to twist on you and that's fine. You can manage it. There we go. Kind of losing count on where the wraps are, but I just want to make sure it's there we go. Good and covered in there. Some presence, but not so much that it's going to compromise the ability of it to sink. Stroking everything back. Really secure that down. And trim out the rest. Okay. There we have a nice little hackle. Not too big, not too small. There's probably a good three solid full turns in there. Next, I'm going to take a wee bit of pearl crystal flash and go flash under the wing. You could even do this with no white wing at all. So I've got about, I've got exactly six strands there, which rarely ever happens, but we'll call it good. Six strands, secure that down with a little loose pinch wrap or two. Get it in place, and you can secure that in. Boom. Carefully, we're going to, without pulling everything loose at this point, trim out as close as possible, trimming every fiber of the crystal flash in that, because sometimes if you miss one, you'll, you'll pull it out, and it'll want to bring a lot of the other with it. And you could add your glues or UV cure at that point too to really make sure that's secured in. And then lastly we're going to go right over the top of that with some white calf's tail if you want that full white wing or another good option is um, natural squirrel tail. If you don't need the, the stark white wing we're just going to grab off a small amount of the calf's tail, evened out the tips as best I can. I'm not going to want to throw this in the stack or anything, I just kind of, you know, if I got some super long ones in there, I'll do what I can to get them out and get out the under fluff, everything that we don't need. And then we can kind of come in and size it to our fly here. Exchange hands. I'm going to kind of cut it at a slight taper so that when I lay it down here, I can do a couple loose wraps, pull down, and carefully work this into a head, covering as much of this as I can. trying to do touching wraps to really get that covered and let's see not too bad let's see that there it's a little more white than I normally would use for the wing 
again this is more for the angler to be able to see the fly or the guide to be able to see the fly from a higher vantage point um, so there we can now that I knock that out of focus <laughs> uh, we can whip finish and apply our head cement or whatever finish you'd like do three or four, a couple three or four whip finishes, three or four turn whip finishes, two, three, and I'm pretty happy with that. Snug that knot down a little bit, and away we go. We have green butt skunk. Now if you wanted to tie just the skunk, is the same thing, just don't add the green and that's an equally effective if not more effective summer bug all right there you go easy peasy